The first um, trick or sort of uh, a feedback I would like to give you is about um, you know, a static games, but you can apply it to uh, dynamic games, especially in uh, repeated games. How so? Well, here's the idea. So uh, let's consider any uh, simultaneous move game or sort of strategic form game G, all right? Uh, in order to make things a bit more concrete, I'm going to give you, uh, well, even simpler example, two by two, all right? I don't really need... Uh, three by three metrics. So it's a, my kid is running as you can hear. Um, so um, let's say each player has two strategies, A, B, and then some payoffs, okay? I mean, I don't know, doesn't really matter, uh, but let's say it's a prisoner's dilemma, okay? So it's like two, two, zero, three, three, zero, and then one, one, okay? So we know that the Nash equilibrium is B, B. Uh, so my, well, what if we add, uh, you know, some constant number uh, to player one's payoff and or player two's payoff? What do I mean? Well, add X to player one, but add X for all possible payoffs of player one, okay? Um, so this is what I mean. So whatever the strategy profile is, add X. X, is it positive, negative, really doesn't matter. It's just some real number, all right? And again, if you like, add Y to player two. But again, you have to do it uniformly, meaning you have to add Y to all possible strategy profiles, okay? So the game basically becomes, the, the game payoff becomes this, right? I mean, the set of players did not change, the set of strategies did not change, set of, um, I'm sorry, payoffs only changed here. And what happened is just we add X to player one and Y to player two. And again, X, Y are just any real number. So the question is, do you think this game is going to behave differently? What does that mean? That means what is going to be the Nash equilibrium of this game? Well, if you do, actually you'll see regardless of Uh, the value x and y, um, AA is still going to be the, un oh, I'm sorry, uh, BB, there you go, that's one uh, mistake. Uh, BB is going to be the unique Nash equilibrium. And in fact, well, because B is still strictly dominant strategy for player one and for player two. How so? Well, I mean, if you compare, right? For example, A versus B. So when the opponent plays A, player one is gonna get X plus two if he plays A and X plus three if he plays, if, if he plays B. So X plus two versus X plus three. Previously, we were comparing two with three. Now we're comparing X plus two with X plus three. I mean, look, it really doesn't matter whether you compare, you know, two versus three or x plus two versus three. You see what I mean? So as long as x is the same on both sides of the inequality, the sign of the inequality, we know that this is the case because two is less than three. So whether x is positive or negative, uh, because I'm adding x, not multiplying, the sign of the inequality will not change. So therefore, because again, I applied or added this x to all possible payoffs, uh, a payoff of player one uh, at, at all possible strategy profiles, well, it is not going to change the best response functions. So therefore, if BB was the unique Nash equilibrium before adding X and Y, well, it still be the unique Nash after adding X and Y. And again, this is true regardless of the value of X and Y, okay? So, um, if there is a mixed strategy, there is no mixed strategy in Nash equilibrium in this game, but if any game, G, if there is a mixed strategy in Nash equilibrium, adding X and or Y in this fashion is not even going to change the mixed strategy either. Well, why is that so? You may wonder. Well, that's the beauty of expected utility theory, because uh, remember the expected utility function, um, 
was unique uh, up to its affine transformation, meaning if some utility function uh, represents uh, a, a von Neumann Morgenstern uh, utility maximizers agent's preferences, well, then A times X plus B also maximizes the utility. So here, basically, uh, what is this X? What is this B? Well, obviously, I all of a sudden uh, started using a different notation. I know, I'm sorry for this. But it basically means if X is an alternative, the uh, uh, or, or I am sorry, let me be more uh, clear. So uh, A times U of X plus or U of whatever plus B is also representing this agent's uh, preferences. So here, basically, I applied uh, edit x. So my b is x here, and a is still uh, constant, right? a1. I did not multiply anything. So you see what I mean? So um, therefore, whether, I mean, again, it's like adding x and y here doesn't change Nash equilibrium, etc., etc., but also uh, multiplying all the payoffs with a positive constant here a being positive is critical, by the way, but B can be any real number, all right? So because of this property of the expected utility, uh, uh, um, you know, function, um, well, thanks to that property, we have this property. It's like whether you multiply uh, the payoffs of each player with some positive constant and add some other constant or not, it really doesn't change anything. Well. Why am I saying all this? Uh, that's kind of um, a short proof or intuition behind why, for example, repeating stage game Nash equilibrium forever is also subgame perfect Nash equilibrium or Nash equilibrium of any repeated game, right? If you remember, so if you, for example, think about a prisoner's dilemma repeated game, infinite horizon or finite horizon, doesn't matter, okay? So in that sense, this forever, I can put it in parentheses. So uh, the unique Nash equilibrium is BB or the defect defect. Well, repeating this forever, if it is an infinite horizon or repeating this as long as the game continues, is the Nash equilibrium and the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium of this repeated game. Well, why is that so? Well, because if you look at this repeated game from any period, uh, I mean, when, when I say look at it, it's like look the rest of the game. Well, then repeating the Nash equilibrium again and again basically means, for example, here, the Nash equilibrium is BB, meaning we are going to play bb and get one and one payoff so let's ignore x and y for now and so go back to our original payoff vectors um, i'm sorry payoff metrics so it's two two uh, zero three three zero one one so what happens is at the last period we're going to play bb all right so we're going to get one each and then uh, in the period before the last, the second, uh, T minus two, let's call it T minus two period, well, the game is going to look like uh, this payoff matrix plus one, one. Why one, one? Well, because in the period T, we all are going to play B. And so each of us are going to get one. So what's going to happen is when these players look at this repeated game prisoner's dilemma in from period t minus 2, what they're going to see is in fact a strategic form game where we add 1 to each player's payoff. Okay? And then if, you, if they look at this game from period t minus 3, the same thing. Because they are, again, remember playing uh, BB at all stages, uh, what they are going to see is adding another one to all those payoffs. So that means if the strategy is such that play the Nash equilibrium, the same Nash equilibrium again and again and again, well then uh, when they look at this game at the very beginning of this game, t equals zero, all right, what they are going to see 
is in the normal form or in the strategic form is a matrix, a game matrix where at each uh, strategy, actually their payoff is added by some constant number X. And player two is going to see some constant number added to all his payoffs Y. And so what is the Nash equilibrium of this game, uh, of this um, uh, uh, strategic form game? Well, again, it's exactly the same as the uh, original uh, Nash equilibrium of the original game. You see what I mean? So because of this, repeating the same stage game Nash equilibrium uh, in any repeated game is always a subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. Uh, I mean, this is not a formal proof, but the basic intuition basically comes from this fact. Okay? Any question, guys?